everybody, welcome back into another fun and exciting Algebra 1 class. Today we are going to uh, just pick up where we left off in the last lesson, continuing to talk about how to solve systems of equations. And in today's lesson, we're going to talk about how to do that by what's called elimination. This is probably my favorite way to solve them once you, once you get it down. It, to me, it's the easiest way to do it. It's quick, easy. Um, you know, sometimes it, it works a little better by substitution or by graphing, but I do like the elimination method. So hopefully uh, you'll learn something today and uh, you can use this method in the future. We are on page 163 in your book, 163. And if you'll look at page 163, they kind of show you the idea, the concept behind this. The concept behind elimination is exactly what it says, eliminating something. What you want to do is you want to eliminate one of the variables because we all know that you can't solve an equation with two variables. I mean, you can do it like we did it in substitution and get the y by itself, but you're not really solving anything. You're just putting everything to the other side. And so one way that you can do it is by eliminating one of the variables. Um, on page 164, you'll see over there it has a, a list of steps. I've also put those steps here on the screen. You can look down. Number one is put both equations in standard form. That's very important. If the equations are not in standard form, we have to rearrange them so that we have our x and then our y equals our constant, okay? And that's standard form. It's, most of the time you're going to get them in standard form, but sometimes they're not. So we have to rearrange them to standard form. That's step number one. And if you look down here, here's the example we'll be doing. If you look at this, it's x, then y, well, then equals, and then the constant. x, y equals, and constant. And then you'll see this one, x, y equals, and then a constant. And that's called standard form. So that's the way we want to put these. Most of the time, again, they're going to be in standard form. You don't have to do anything. Um, so then we're going to go to step number two. And in step number two, we want to cancel one of the variables by adding the two equations. All right, so let's go back down here. What we're going to do is we're going to add these two equations, okay? So I'm going to add it like just up and down. I'm going to add the x's, and I'm going to add the y's, and then I'm going to add the constants. So you'll see what happens here. x plus x gives me 2x. At, uh, excuse me, y minus y. So look what happens here. And, and remember, these have a 1 in front of them. Okay. So if I have 1y and I take 1y away, the y's cancel. Okay. And then I get equals 7. Now we've, we've done exactly what we set out to do. We have canceled one of the variables. That's the idea. That's the concept that we're going for. Okay. And so now we have 2x equals 7. We would divide each side by 2, and we would get, that cancels, we get x equals 7 over 2. Okay. x equals 7 over 2. Now, that is, and let's let's kind of go back up here real quick to the steps. Um, notice number three. I'm going to skip number three for just a second. We're going to come back to that one in just a minute, but let's skip it for now. Notice it says solve the remaining equation. Well, we did that. I kind of skipped to that one without going back up to the steps. And that was right there where we had the 2x minus uh, 2x equals 7. Solve the equation. Step number five substitute in the solution to one of the original equations and solve. It doesn't matter which original equation that you use, but you just want to pick one of these original equations. So let's pick the first one, x plus y equals 4. We just want to so substitute in this 7 over 2 for the x. So now x is 7 over 2 plus y equals 4. Let me get rid of this so that we can work right there. And we want to move the 7 over 2 to the other side. So we'd have 4 minus 7 over 2. That's going to cancel, and we're going to get y equals 4 minus 7 over 2. 
Well, this is a problem for some of you because you don't know how to solve fractions. What I would have is 4 minus 7 over 2. Probably the easiest way is to convert this into a mixed number. How do we do that? Well, we just divide it out. 7 divided by 2, that goes 6 times, and I get, excuse me, that goes 3 times. Let's try that again. I get 6 uh, subtract minus 1, so 1 half, 3 and 1 half. So I could change this to 3 and 1 half right here. And now it should look a lot fam more familiar. You'd cancel here and you'd get 2 over 2. Okay? And then you just subtract and you would get 1 half and you subtract here, you get 0. So basically you just get 1 half, positive 1 half. And so y equals 1 half. And believe it or not, you're done. Like I said, this is an easier way to do it. Um, you had x equals... Um, 7 over 2 was the way that we wrote that. So 7 over 2. And so then you're done. Now you can check it. I won't take the time on this video to check it, but you check it just like we did in substitution. You would put, um, take, take this one right here, take the second one, and you'd put 7 over 2 for the x, 1 half for the y, and when you do that, it will come out to 3 because that answer is correct. Um, now, I told you I was going to come back to step number three. Notice it says, if you can't cancel, multiply by something to allow you to cancel. All right, let's go to example number two. If you look at this one, we can't cancel anything. In other words, if we add these, which is step number, number two, we add. Uh, well, first of all, we're in standard form. Okay, there's your x, there's your y, there's your constant, there's your x, there's your y, there's your constant. So we're good. We're in standard form. And in step number two, it says to add. Okay, remember, we're going to cancel by adding. That's step number two. Well, when we go down here and we try to cancel by adding, it doesn't work because we end up with 5x plus 5y. We didn't cancel a variable. The whole point to that step is elimination we're trying to eliminate. So let's go back up here to this. And it says, step number three, if you can't cancel, okay, if one of them doesn't cancel out, what are we going to do? How are we going to solve this by, can't, by elimination? Notice it says multiply by something to allow you to cancel. All right, so let's go back here and let's say, what would we have to multiply by to get these things to cancel? Now, it's going to be a little tricky right here, but I need you to kind of open up your mind just a little bit. Here's what we want. We want to find either X or Y. It doesn't matter. Let's do X since we canceled Y last time. Let's cancel X this time. So let me get rid of this real quick. Let's look for something that if we multiply both of these, so we're going to have to multiply both of these by something. If we multiply this one by 2, that's going to make this a 6x, right? Okay. Notice if we multiply this one by negative 3, that's going to make this a negative 6x. Here's what we're looking for. You want to find an LC d right there lcm least common multiple that's what's going to be here is your least common multiple if you remember how to do least common multiples that's what we're doing you can also just kind of do it by trial by error right there trying to find something that will cancel but by taking these to six now notice i need one of them to be a positive six and one of them to be a negative six if they're both sixes it doesn't cancel it comes out to 12 okay so I need one to be a positive six, one to be a negative six. Now, if you remember about uh, equations, we can't just multiply the, the x by two. That's not going to work. We have to distribute it through the whole thing because we have to keep it balanced. So if we multiply the three times two, we have to multiply this two times two as well. And you get four y, and we're going to get minus eight. 
So look, we've created a new equation right there. And then over here, so we can put an X through or line through that. Here, we take the negative 3 through the whole thing. So negative 3 times 2 gives us our negative 6. That's what we're looking for. Negative 3 times 3 gives us a negative 9Y. Negative 3 times 5 gives us a negative 15. And then we're done with that one. So now we have a new equation. Two new equations, actually. And we want to take those and we want to add those together. Well, look what happens here. 6x times neg or plus negative 6 gives us a 0. Those ones cancel. 4 minus 9 is going to give us a negative 5y equals, and then we have negative 15, negative, uh, what is that, negative 23. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and finish off the problem by dividing both sides by negative 5. Remember, uh, negative, negative, I'm going to get y equals 23 over 5. Have you noticed already that you, a lot of these are going to give you fractions? Okay, because they are. Uh, you're going to get a lot of fractions on these. Now, that is our y variable. That is our y coordinate point. So... Remember, we're looking for our x and our y. And so right now we have our y, and our y is 23 over 5. But we do not have our x. Our x is still missing. So we need to go back, and this is where um, you'll go back up here to um, substitute in the solution to one of the original equations and solve. So let's go back to an original equation. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff right here and that will help us to be able to plug back into one of the originals it'll be easier if we use this bottom one just because it's there and we can um, not have to erase well I'll just erase all this so it's not as clouded you can see everything that's going on hopefully all right so now I want to take this right here this 23 over 5 and I want to substitute it in for that y why, why? Because that's the, that's the y number that we found. That's our y solution. So let's plug it back in. So I get 2x plus 3 times 23 over 5 equals 5. Now, this is where, in my opinion, this is where algebra gets real. The first few months of, of algebra class is kind of like pre-algebra, a little bit harder. This is where algebra finally starts to, to kind of get hard. And one of the reasons it starts to get hard is because we are going to be dealing with a bunch of fractions from here until the end of the book. So if you're not real good at fractions, I've, I've told you this before, but you need to make sure that you're really working on your fractions. This is a, a very important time for you to make sure that you know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. Okay, let me get rid of that. Sorry. All right, so what are we going to do here? Let's, let's keep going with this, and let's just solve it. So we have to multiply this. So we're going to get 2x plus, um, you know, you can multiply like that. So we're going to get um, 3 times 23 gives me 69 over 5 equals 5. And our goal is to get x by itself. Now we want to get x equals. So we're going to subtract 69 over 5 from both sides. And that's going to cancel. Now, so we end up with 2x, cancel that, equals this right here. 5 minus 69 over 5. Again, this is where it starts to get a little bit more challenging. So what we want to do here, my suggestion, would be to just set it up like a regular problem. Well, let's make this a mixed number first. So 5 goes into that um, 13 and 4 fifths. So basically 69 by 5 goes 1, 5, 1, 19, 13, and 4 fifths. Okay? 
So if you don't know how to do that, make sure that you know how to solve fractions out, turn them from mixed numbers into improper fractions, and from improper fractions into mixed numbers. It's going to be important right here. So now we have uh, 5 minus, we could write it like this, 5 minus uh, 13 and 4 fifths. Okay. Notice that this is the bigger number. So in in algebra, in algebra, the way that we subtract positive and negative numbers is we're going to just subtract. And then we're, we're going to take the sign of the larger when we're done. So what we need to do here is just subtract that. So we're going to get 4 fifths since that one's 0, basically 0 fourths. And then 13 minus 5 gives me 8 and 4 fifths. And the bigger sign is the negative sign because it was negative 13. So that's going to be negative 8 and 4 fifths. I'm probably right here going to turn that back into a mixed number. It's just to me that's just a little bit easier. Uh, excuse me, turn it back into an improper fraction because we're going to have to divide by 2 in just a second. So it's going to be easier. So 5 times 8 is... Um, 40 and plus 4 is 44, so 44 over 5, and that's a negative, okay? And now we need to divide both sides by 2, so that's going to cancel, and I'm going to get x equals 44 over 5, now that's a negative, divided by 2 over 1. Well, how do we divide? We invert 1 over 2, invert that second fraction, and we multiply. All right, so times, and then we can cancel this right here to 22, and so we're going to get 22 over 5. x equals 22 over 5. Now I'm fine with you leaving that like that, improper fraction for your answer. In fact, it's probably a better, um, improper fraction is probably a, a better answer. Um, but yeah, and, and oh, it's negative. Almost missed that right there. Whoosh, negative. So there's our answer. Negative 22 over 5. So let's go back up here. Negative 22 over 5. So that would be our answer. Our answer would be negative 22 over 5 is the x. 23 over 5 is the y. For some of you, I just absolutely blew your brains. I melted your brains. I turned your brains into mashed potatoes, and I'm sorry. But the reason I did that is because you don't know how to do fractions. And you were watching that going, what is he doing? How is he dividing? How is he adding? How is he subtracting? How is he converting? If, if you can get comfortable with fractions, then algebra can become pretty easy for you. If you're not comfortable with fractions, algebra can be an absolute nightmare for you. Really, the two most important factors in algebra... When I see students have the most success in algebra, here's the two things that they can do well. They can do fractions well, and they can do positive and negative numbers well. And what did we do in that problem? We did fractions, and we did positive and negative numbers. You get good at that, you're going to get good at algebra. How do you do that? Well, practice it. Practice, practice, practice. Keep working on these. Keep um, doing practice problems. Keep working on your fractions, keep working on your positive and negative numbers, okay? Well, that's all I have for you in this lesson. If you missed anything, you can always go back and rewind it, watch it again, and uh, just keep working on these practice problems. They're not easy, uh, they're challenging, but it's algebra. They're supposed to be challenging, that's the point, okay? If you have any questions, you can always just make sure to just put it down there in the comments. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.